Speaking of Go Barbecue back here, you're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm okay, Jerry. I'm okay. We're still a little, still a little, a little hyped up still from our previous recording that we just got done doing for Thursday's episode. On on that thought, uh, in the chat right now, uh, Chop Daddy, aka Sloop Daddy, aka e- Stuart E4 US Vet, who is our guest picker today, would like us to know. Uh, fuck Michigan. I'm yeah. just I'm just reading I'm just reading the chat. The team up north. All right, we got six games we're picking at for today's episode. If you want to listen to our our conversation about the game, check out Thursday's episode. With that further ado, we will jump right into it. It is rivalry week, so we got a bunch of games to choose from here, and we'll start in the Northwest, Oregon and Oregon State. This game, 3.30 kickoff, ABC at Oregon State. And the Ducks are a three and a half point favorite. It's a little, Which, little, little surprising to see that number three and a half, right? It, it feels a bit low. I, at first glance, yeah. it feels a little low. Um, but Oregon, if you look through the stats offensively, Yards per play, Oregon dominate. Points per play, Oregon dominates. Completion percentage, red zone, uh, excuse me. Well, yeah, red zone scoring, dominating. Third point conversion, it's it's higher. I wouldn't say dominating. But if we go over and we look at the defensive stats, Oregon State, dominating, 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 dominating. We we have we have conflicting styles here. Oregon State, who like traditionally is like one of the worst teams in the Power Five, is not that bad this year. They're not a bad football team this year. This number you. might might feel surprising to a lot of people. And again, if we look at like against the spread, Oregon State is nine and two this year. Nine and two against the spread. Oregon's eight and three against the spread, though. So (laughs) not much of a drop (laughs) there. (laughs) Not much. Yeah, not much of a drop there. Um, I just I it feels like I'm walking away from points to not take Oregon minus three and a half. If you look at Oregon State, once again, they beat their number against Arizona State by 16 and a half points. They bested the number uh, against California by 17 points. They bested the number by Washington by one and a half points, but then 10 points, 11 points. Lately, the past five games, please keep dropping picks they in the past five games they've not just been beating the number but dominating the number whereas oregon's just sort of been skating by all signs and i mean all signs point towards take oregon state so is that who you picking then is oregon state no i'm picking oregon it's yeah, it's think. three and a half points for one of the best scoring teams in the country. It just feels I just really want I really should. I really should pick Oregon State, but I'm gonna pick Oregon. Yeah, but um, tss, it's what I do here. You've been here long enough, Austin. You know, whatever team I'm hyping up is probably the team I'm not going to pick. <laughs> yep, I agree. I, I'm going to go with Oregon as well. They got a lot to prove. They have a very, very slim chance to make the playoffs, which um, I think we, we covered that on Tuesday's episode. So listen, listen to that. We went yeah, real kind of, deep on that. But, we did a million well, playoff scenarios on Tuesday. If that's your sort of thing, go listen to Collegiate Chaos, which is our yep. Tuesday episode. All right. All right. Next game here. Kyle, is... Kyle, Kyle. Stewart. It's Stewart. Stewart's, Stewart's pick. 
Or uh, Stewart says, Oregon will win this game with ease. Give me the Ducks. Uh, Ducks 47, Beavers 17. Quack, quack. All right. Moving on to uh, the Auburn and Alabama game. 3.30 on CBS. And Alabama is a 21 and a half point favorite. That seems... Mm. On, one, on one on one hand, Alabama, man, it, it's it's just I uh, just you look at Alabama, they've been struggling uh, to what what is what is their um, their performance here? I don't I want to say that they're they're not doing too well with the spread, aren't they? Both teams are five and six against the spread this year. Yeah, Al- Alabama, um, not not doing too well recently, so. I will um, say this, though, if you look at the past three games, mm-hmm. Auburn is three and zero against the spread and Alabama yeah. is zero and three against the spread. If we just look at the last three games. Yeah. And typically this game is always played closer. Right. So I'll, I don't I'll, know if I'll that's pick, true. I'll, pick, I'll yeah. pick I'll pick I'll pick Auburn just because of that. I think, I, Auburn, I think Alabama Alabama will it win with ease. It may be that exactly 21 points, which would cover, but. (laughs) Alabama, the past six games, six games have covered one time. Ouch. They didn't cover against Texas A&M. They didn't cover against Tennessee. They lost to Tennessee. They didn't cover against Mississippi. Excuse me. They did. they, They did cover against Mississippi State. Uh, they were a 21 point favorite. They won by 24. Uh, they did not cover against LSU. In fact, they lost against LSU and they did not cover against Mississippi. I'm I, 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 Bama wins this football game. Don't get me wrong. Bama wins this football game, but Bama probably wins this football game by like 17 points, maybe 20 points, maybe 21 on the dot. But I'm taking Auburn to cover. All not right. win, not win. Don't get me wrong, but I think they cover. All right, let's see what Stewart says. Bama has checked out, and this will open the door for War Eagles to soar with pride, but barely covering the spread. He has Bama 42, Auburn 21. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. But the over-under in this game is 49 and a half. That's that seems really low. Oh, here we go. Uh, Austin says last 10 Iron Bowls. Bama by 28. Bama by 49. Auburn by six. Bama by 11. Bama by 16. Bama by 18. Auburn 12. Auburn three. Bama 29. Bama two. I appreciate that, Austin. Thank you. And like aside from the last two games. Those are relatively close scores, especially considering how good Bama's been in the last 10 years. I mean, if you really factor in how amazing Bama's been for the last 10 years, and then you just kind of ignore the last two games, Mm. um, that's not a bad performance by Auburn. Not bad at all. All right. I'm just saying if you're Michigan, you if you're Michigan, if you make, if you make Ohio state equal Bama and Michigan equal Auburn, you're probably taking those results. (laughs) Yeah, you would. All right, we're moving on to um, the Big Ten. Get we're moving to a Big Ten game here. Uh, Penn State still trying to find their rival. Is it Michigan State? I don't know, but uh, they're playing this weekend, and Penn State is a eighteen and a half point favorite, playing on Fox Sports One on, at four p.m. The Big Ten has been trying to manufacture this as a rivalry since the '90s when Penn State joined, and it's never it's never taken. Penn State doesn't want a rival. Penn State is too good to be. And again, I'm speaking as, from the uh, perspective of Penn State people. They're too good to be rivals with Michigan State. They're too good to be rivals with Pitt. They're too good to be rivals with Maryland. The one yeah. team they want to be a rival with is Ohio State. And guess what? Ohio State's too good to be a rival to Penn State. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I'll go first here. Uh, Austin I'll go, says I'll Penn go. State's rivalry is ethics. Burn. Fucking I'll burnt. With, I'll go first with this one. Uh, what, what, what was it? A 19 or excuse me, 18 and a half point favorite. Even at 19 and a half, I'm still picking Penn State. Uh, Sparty struggling to score. Uh, and Penn State's been scoring over Insane. 40 points. Been scoring over 40 points in four of their last five games. Or if you want to even um, bring that down even further, they scored 30 points or more in in at least their five games. I'm, I'm going. I'm going back further. Um, also, they also scored 30 against uh, Ohio State uh, since since Michigan. Their Michigan loss. Since their Michigan loss, they've scored more than 30, 30 or more points in every game. And yeah. I don't I don't trust Sparty to be able to to score half of that, not even half of that. So I'll, I'll pick I'll pick Penn State to cover. Um, Penn State, ever since they lost to Michigan, they've been playing on their heads. Now, they lost to Ohio State. Acknowledged. They lost to Ohio State. Uh, but they played that game, I think, better than at least Ohio State fans were expecting. Uh, and they covered that in that game. They lost, but they covered. In fact, speaking of covers, Penn State has covered five of their last five games. Ever since losing to Michigan, Penn State has covered in every single game, including Minnesota. They beat the cover by 23 points. They beat Minnesota by 28 points. They beat the cover by 23 points. They do cover against Ohio State by, by two and a half points. They were a 15 and a half point dog. They lost by 13. Against Indiana, blew away the cover by 17 points. Maryland beat the cover by 19 points. Against Rutgers, beat the coverage by 20, the cover by 26 and points. Penn State's on a fucking hot streak. They're eight and three against the the line this year. Michigan State's only three and six and two, three and six and two against the line this year. Uh, give me Penn State. If the, if there was, some people might look at the Oregon game. We'll talk about the LSU Texas A uh, Texas A and M game a little bit later. To me, if you had to bet your house on a game, those other games look ridiculous and they look more tempting. This game. I take I, I'm going to I'm going to take Michigan or excuse me, I'm going to take Penn State. Or right, every um, day. I, th I think you've copied um his um thing twice here because I don't have his last three games here, but I'll. I'll read oh, I got games. it. I got it. I got it. What he has here for Michigan State here. He has here. Michigan State has had their struggles, but this one will not be one for them. They'll lose. They'll lose it. Cover Michigan State 17 Penn State 35. Uh, last three games in the in the notes. It's also currently okay. on the YouTube video, but that's okay. Hold on, is that a cover? Thirty-five to seventeen is a nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess that's not okay. All right. Um, moving on. Iowa State and TCU. Sorry, I had to refresh my page there. Iowa State and TCU. Four o'clock on Fox and TCU is a only Jared, a nine and a half point favorite over a four and seven Iowa State who has only won one game in the Big 12. Let me ask you this, Kyle. Mm -hmm. How many games and don't look at your notes. Look at the camera. Look, look straight at the camera for me. That's not the camera. That's the monitor. Well, I'm looking at fine. Fine. <laughs> I'm look at the camera. I was looking at you, but all right, go ahead. How many games has TCU won by more than 10 points in conference? In conference? Yeah, we're not counting the FCS game. We're not counting Colorado. Um, more than 10 points in conference. I'm going to say five. 
the correct answer uh, was achieved by Austin, which makes sense. He's our resident TCU expert. Uh, I w- he says, I would guess one. It's just Oklahoma right. That is correct. Oh, that they. OK. Interesting. Yeah, uh, they they beat Colorado by uh, 25 points. They beat some FCS school by 42 points. We're not counting that. They beat Oklahoma by 31. They slammed Oklahoma. But every other game has been 10 points or less, which is why this is where this nine and a half. You might be thinking to yourself, where's this nine and a half number comes from? Well, uh, they beat Baylor by one. They beat Texas by seven. They beat Texas Tech by 10, West Virginia by 10, Kansas State by 10, Oklahoma okay. State by three, Texas by seven. Okay. They don't win games in spectacular fashion. They do keep winning games, of course. They're undefeated. But big wins don't really appear to be their thing. That being said, they're still, miraculously, Eight and two against the spread this year, whereas Iowa State is four and six against the spread this year. Iowa State, though, of all their losses, they have seven losses. Six of those seven are by one score. Are they the are they the new Nebraska? I mean, you don't considering what happened to Nebraska the year after that for their for Matt Campbell's sake let's hope not survive in advance baby that's right I, I'm still I'm still gonna take Texas um Texas Christian here I'll still take uh TCU to to cover I I know all those stats numbers kind of lead like oh no Iowa State should be able to cover here I just I just think TCU is just a much better team and they should be able to cover. So they're a much better team. I'm going to stick with my gut here. They're a much better team. I can give you a bunch of statistics to prove that, but you don't need it. You know, they're a much better team. Uh, They should be able to cover, but will they? I'm going to go. Yes, but man, you're going to be sweating. You're going to be sweating it out. Until like five minutes left in the fourth quarter, you're going to be like, oh, come on, TCU, cover, cover, cover. It's going to be an ugly cover, but it'll be a cover. Yeah, Stewart, Stewart uh, uh, disagrees. He says TCU has been, well, agreeing with what you're saying, but disagreeing with uh, your pick. Again, TCU I always give the opposite teams. case that I actually yeah. end up picking. TCU been bar- has been beating teams by not much. Give me Iowa State with the points. TCU 27 and the the Cyclones 21. Just (laughs) general question. This is an off-season question, so I'm just going to ask it. Let it float out there and we won't answer it. Has this season hurt Matt Campbell as uh, like the next hot football coach? And we'll just let that float out there. Uh, If you're if you're on YouTube, go ahead and leave your answer in the YouTube comments. If you're in our Discord server. Go ahead and let us know your answer to that in the Discord server. All right. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Next next game here. Um, <laughs> I'm a YouTuber now. Commit a genocide on that subscribe button and don't forget the bell. I'm just I'm just going to move on. Uh, <laughs> so the next game here, LSU and Texas A&M were uh, maybe at the beginning of the year, we thought that their records might have been uh, reversed. <laughs> yeah but uh either way lsu nine and two texas a&m four and seven this is a seven o'clock game on espn and i know that was for me Stuart. and the tigers are a nine also a nine and a half point favorite here i'm just gonna go with my gut instinct texas a&m is just that 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 bus is burning and it's been pushed off a cliff. It's there's no hope to to save it at all. I want to say I want to say and I haven't looked at my, any of your um, numbers you posted, Jared. I'm going to don't guess worry. I'll Texas tell you. A&M, I'm going to guess Texas A&M has been just awful. Yep. Trying to cover the cover the spread here. So I'm, yep. I'm, I'll pick I'll pick LSU. Kyle, to confirm your guess, they are three and seven against the spread this year. 
Oof. Of course, they're about three and seven just in football games this year. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, LSU, by comparison, is seven and four against the spread. Significantly better. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but Jared, everyone's expectations for LSU were very low at the beginning of the season, and Texas A&M's. Uh, expectations very high at the beginning of the season. Therefore, those numbers must be skewed by that. You'd be wrong. If we just look at the last four games, let's make it five because it fits my narrative better. If you look <laughs> at the past five games, LSU is four and one against the spread. Texas A&M is 0-5 against the spread. Even with the lowered expectation, Texas A&M is failing. Now, you know how I like to, like, make a case, make a case, make a case, and then pick the opposite direction? Not doing it this time. Give me LSU. All right, and the oh, before we pick the last game, Stewart here says Texas A&M <laughs> will finally see a return on their investment. They'll not only cover the spread, but they'll cover the money line. A&M 35, LSU 21. Wrong. I very rarely will just be like wrong, but wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our last game, the biggest, uh, the second biggest game for for the uh, for the weekend here, Notre Dame and USC. Who who would have thought Notre Dame, who was unranked going into week after week three, comes coming in, and they're now ranked thirteenth here. And they and they have a chance to uh, be be the spoiler maker and attempt to try to kick off you kick USC off of the playoff um, discussion here. Uh, USC is a five and a half point favorite. It is in, at USC here. Oh boy, what do you got, Jared? Kyle, do do you see all the stats I put under the uh, USC Notre Dame game in the in the show mm -hmm. notes? Let me scroll down. Scroll, scroll on down. Uh, yeah, you have nothing. Uh huh. Let me tell you why I put nothing there. Uh -huh. Before I saw the spread. Before I saw anything. I said to myself, "I'm picking the underdog." All right. I think it's a 50, 50, 50 football game, and therefore Vegas is going to pay me to pick one game or one team over the other team. In the form of points, of course. I'm just going to, I'm going to pick the underdog in this game. I think it's a 50 50 football game as to who wins. So I immediately said to myself, I'm just taking the underdog in this one. So that's what I'm doing. No analytics this time. No nothing. I Who's against the spread and uh, uh, who's on what streak again? None of that. Give me the underdog. It's a 50 50 football game. You're going to give me five and a half points to pick a team. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I'm picking I'm picking the underdog too. Notre Dame has been playing really well recently here. Um, they've been there. They've been destroying teams the past uh, three games, including two of them being. Um, oh, I'm reading that backwards. Um USC is favored, They're, therefore Notre Dame's the underdog. I picked Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, they destroyed Clemson. They easily beat um, Syracuse. They easily beat Boston College that they should have. Navy, you, you just shouldn't play um, the acad any of the academies, but they did escape a win there. Which but rule is that, other Austin? That, other, other than that one, I think, yeah, Notre Dame's been playing really well, but I mean, man, it, you almost you almost want to maybe have uh, one of our rules um, pick the pick the quarterback because Caleb Williams has been it is just stellar. That's what that's what I asked. That's what I asked Austin. Which rule is? Well, we have we have two. 
um, when in doubt, pick the quarterback and uh, never play Navy or Army or Air Force. Those are two separate rules. Yeah. Rule three and rule four. There you go. We do have a pick when in doubt, pick the quarterback rule. <laughs> Austin is our lore master. <laughs> In the past five games, uh, Caleb Williams has been, th- has thrown for almost 380 yards per game. Uh, don't lose twice as in there somewhere, Stuart. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, and 19 touchdowns in the past five games as well. So he's been he's been uh, just just passing. I don't even know what he has rushing. Rushing, he has an additional four games. So he has over 20 touchdowns in the past five games here. So, uh, man, he's he, he's I think in some odds, he's now the Heisman favorite because of his recent games here, which I mean, you can't bl- you can't blame it for. 3,500 passing yards, 33 touchdowns. Yeah, I, you, you can't, I, I can, I can understand why, but I feel that Notre Dame's defense is going to be able to shut him down more. So yeah, I'll, I'll pick Notre Dame to, to cover as well. And Stewart here says just simply Notre Dame will win out, right? 27 to 14. Wow. I said that's a that's a low scoring. What what is um? Oh, it's it's got to be score. What's the lowest score that USC has had this year? That is a yeah, good question. Seven, Seventeen. Oh, no, against okay. Oregon State, seventeen to fourteen. Minus that game, their lowest score that they've had was was a uh, thirty to Washington state. And then before that is 41 to Stanford. And then every, everything else is more than 42 points. Uh, Over under currently at 64 and a half. For the record. How how many games have they won by more than one score? That's a good question. Uh, Colorado. Colorado doesn't Cal, This is a recurring uh, Austin, this Colorado, isn't this isn't the rule because it only applies to this season. Colorado doesn't count. Yeah. Colorado is basically an FCS school at this point. Uh, I, I'm still going to count it though. But Colorado, Washington State, Arizona State, Fresno State, Stanford, and Rice. Six out of eleven. Okay, Kyle. Real quick, and this is something maybe we should have brought up uh, on the Thursday episode. How many games has Ohio State? You might already know the answer to this. How many games has Ohio State won by double digits? So every. Okay, everyone. All right, everyone knew that. Everyone. Okay, maybe we didn't need to say it on the Thursday show then. It appears that literally (laughs) everyone already knows that. Every. (laughs) Literally everybody already knows that. Which thanks to steel and thanks to Steel Chambers that that stayed intact. Yes. Uh, excuse time out zach harrison well, and steel chambers you're correct you're correct yes zach tom, Marceau. yes uh tom moore said that or yeah. you said toby but i <laughs> Ooh. i corrected it i know you know i know you said it on I, got, I got i got an interesting thing remind me after the episode here um that i will put in our sloop cats only channel oh Kyle with the monster plug, you're going to hold back data. You're going to paywall data. I am. You're not just going to put it in the discord, which we want everyone to join. We want everyone to go to discord.sloopcast.com and join the discord where most of the channels are uh, totally free to access. The server is free to access. Um, and the uh, most of the channels in the server free to access. There is, however, a Sloop Cats only section uh, where you do need to be a Patreon uh, to it's access little, those channels. Uh, you can go to Patreon. $3. For $3 or less, as a matter of fact, um, or, or more or more. You can get less than $3 if you do a full 12 months up front. That gives you like a 11, 12 percent discount if you do the full 12 months up front. Um, but if you do, if you choose to go month to month. Uh, it is, uh, $3 a month 
at least to access the uh, premium section of the Discord. You get that. Um, the premium section of the Discord includes the ability that uh, Stuart and Austin are currently using to listen to us record, give us live feedback. Hi, Austin. Um, give us live feedback, um, distract me, and then get mad at me for being distracted as what happened on the Thursday episode. That's a thing that they do to me. Um, the distraction is the most fun. I, I, I know you feel that way, Stuart or Austin. Um, and so again, for $3 a month, you can do more. You don't have to. There are additional benefits for the, for like the nine 99 package. Um, there are additional benefits, but you get all of the digital access you want for that $3 tier. Um, again, it gives you access to the discord server. It allows you to listen to us record these live. It also gives you your own custom, uh, podcast feed. You can take this, you can take a, U, this URL. It's, it's an RSS link. If any old heads out there know what that is. Take this RSS link, you put it in your podcast app, and you're getting a early access to the show. It releases, you know, if, if a show typically releases Thursday morning, you will typically get it Wednesday night and so on and so forth in that. Um, but maybe more importantly, you don't get those annoying Spreaker ads that play before and after and during the show. There's pre-recorded ads that you might be getting in the podcast feed. Those are gone. You won't get that on your on your Patreon exclusive link. Um, and there there are other benefits too that um, I'm I'm getting tired of hearing myself talk, so I'll I'll leave it at that. But there are additional benefits, and you if you want to see those additional benefits, you can go to Sloopcast dot uh, Patreon. Nope, I'm a, I'm gonna back that up. Patreon dot It's all it's always something.thesloopcast.com. For example, there's also merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, there's discord.thesloopcast.com. There's patreon.thesloopcast.com. There's twitter.thesloopcast.com. There's youtube.thesloopcast.com. There's spotify.thesloopcast.com. There is apple.thesloopcast.com. Uh, there's onlyfans.thesloopcast. No, that, that one's Austin, you're not that that's that's paywall, buddy. You're not supposed to acknowledge that, that exists. Or you can find all of these over at just the sloopcast.com. Yes, you can find if you oh that Jerry does too many links. Well, we have a campsite page. If you don't know what a campsite page is, it's a it's a what's the what's the more popular version of that called? Tree link, something like that. Um link tree. I said it backwards. Thank you, Austin. Linktree. It's a Linktree site, except that it's a campsite site. It's literally the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, all, all of that, you can find links to all the other links at just the sloopcast.com. But cheeks.thesloopcast.com is another one that you're not supposed to be talking about, Stuart. Um, that, that's that's for paying people only. You're not supposed to be talking about that. Um uh, all, all of that at sloopcast.com. The sloopcast. The sloopcast.com. Um, Kyle, do, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? How about them Buckeye basketball team, Jared? Holy shit. Oh, we December's coming. We'll we get to talk about basketball here in a little bit. Oh, holy shit. The Buckeyes have been have been on a roll here. Um other than other than their um other than their loss that they had to uh, San Diego State, um, but they've they've done really well. I mean, they they had a they, they had moments against that San Diego State that looked like they were making a run, and then San Diego State um, made a couple of plays to keep the lead and all that. But their past two games, though, against Cincinnati, just crushed crushed te- uh, Cincinnati by twenty eight points. Uh, who also who also just crushed Louisville today, uh, and then uh, beat Texas Tech, who who Texas Tech was favored in this game. Uh, so it was a great way to finish off um, their trip down in uh, or over in Maui. So I anticipate the Buckeyes to be ranked after this, which they they have a big game heading on down to uh, North Carolina here, Jared. 
this next week. G Kyle, did you get tickets? <laughs> no. uh, there is not enough discord money for me to go to that game <laughs> if you want kyle to be able to afford tickets to get into into a duke home game uh please go to patreon dot the sloop ca- yeah that it's a tiny arena i mean considering it's duke basketball which is an enormous brand and insanely popular and very supported it's a relatively tiny arena it's very difficult to get tickets um yeah. But by the way, uh, San Diego State is like 17th or at least they were 17th when they played. So for all, if, oh. if you're like if you're like a football head and you think, ooh, San Diego State, it's a good football or it's a good basketball team. OK, it's not too bad. I was expecting it to be a little bit worse, but. And yes, Texas um, Tech was 21. It's about 100. The cheapest tickets is about one hundred sixty dollars right now, Jared. Uh, Austin said he found one for 135. He must be using a better site than you. And if you want to know what that site is, have that site reach out to us and pay for advertising. Don't you dare tell them, Austin. I will delete it. Austin has the hookup on the best ticket yeah. price. Because there, there is only 9,300 seats in that um, indoor uh, facility. Not not many seats to go around there. I'll tell you if you join the Sloop Cats. There you go. He'll be posting that in the Sloop Cats only section of the Discord. Yeah, but yeah, great wins over Cincinnati and beating Texas Tech, who was ranked at the time that Ohio State beat them. Um, today, as we're, as we're recording, Jared, but on Wednesday for um, our Friday listeners here. But suing went off. 33 points, eight rebounds in that game. In, in in his in his home state, of course, <laughs> right. And hey, like I forgot what I was gonna say. Lost it. Oh, I was gonna say, Kyle, if you're gonna buy those tickets, you should maybe buy them soon because yes. if Ohio State if Ohio State becomes ranked, those ticket prices might go up. People might be like, Ah, oh, Ohio State sucks this year. I'll go to a different Duke game. Well, well then that, that, well, then that means that I'm going to be missing our recordings, Jared, because it, the it's next Wednesday is the uh is the game meanwhile austin's down there like yes yes tag me in tag me in (laughs) (laughs) uh but yeah great great to see that the buckeyes are um, he's busy anyway playing really playing really well here and uh yeah yeah We'll, we'll, we'll see how they do against the uh blue devils next week there you go all right kyle is that it um is that the show that is the show jared okay all right um we will once again like we did on thursday uh be playing the dead shembecklers so uh with all that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is the dead shembecklers <laughs>